Welcome to Tony Burns View with news you can use. Tony has over 32 years of experience as a chartered financial planner and wealth manager. Tony's passion is to help you retire early and live the life of your dreams with no financial worries. Now to today's episode. Patience is a virtue when stock markets are irrational. Global stock markets have taken a dip in the last two to three months, during which both our fund, the CCM Intelligent Wealth Fund, and our discretionary fund management service, DFM, have both underperformed world stock markets. This should be of no surprise to our clients who are aware that both our fund and our DFM service are higher risk investments, therefore they experience greater volatility than the average. In reality, is either of our investment propositions higher risk or are they simply more volatile? I would argue the latter. Now, we have a graph of the last 10 years performance of our Parmenian strategy called Strategic Passive, which shows risk grades 1 to 10 performance. And as I mentioned in my equivalent blog on the subject, the graph shows that over a 10 year period, the investments that are the lower risk, particularly from risk grade one, has the lowest return over 10 years. Whereas the higher up the risk scale, the higher the return with risk grade 10, bringing in the greatest return. So although the highest risk grade of 10 fluctuates in value the most, it also produces the best return. Risk grade one fluctuates the least, but it produces the lowest return. Which would you rather have? Interestingly, for every single risk grade increase from one to 10, the investment return is higher than the next lowest risk grade. So two is higher than one, three higher than two, all the way up to 10 compared to nine. Remarkable, isn't it? You see, volatility is not risk. Volatility is volatility, period. A higher risk investment proposition simply experiences a higher level of fluctuations in value than the lower risk one. Does this mean it is truly higher risk? Well, as long as you have at least a 10 year time horizon, I think not. This assumes that you have a high diversification of risk, of course. Well, both our Parmenian portfolio of funds and our discretionary fund management service with Transact and Hubwise offer a very wide diversification of risk covering at least 15 funds. As each fund typically invests in turn in 50 companies, that means that each portfolio invests indirectly into 750 shares. That's 15 funds multiplied by 50 shares in each one. That is a huge diversification of risk. How many of these 750 companies will go bust in a year? Maybe a handful if you're unlucky. That's just 0.66 of 1% or two thirds of 1%. Furthermore, no open-ended investment company, or OIC, during the entire 60-year history of the Investment Association has ever failed and lost investors' money. To top it all, OIC's fund management companies are covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme of £85,000 per fund management company. So in reality, how risky is such a well-diversified portfolio invested over a minimum period of 10 years? I would argue it is relatively low risk if you accept that the true definition of investment risk is the risk of absolute loss of your capital. Surely losing your money is a far greater risk than the mere fluctuations in value of your investment, assuming of course you are a long-term investor of 10 years or more, isn't it? What we have found in recent months is that both our fund and our DFM propositions have underperformed the market in the short term but we remain undiminished in our belief that our long-term investment performance will be excellent. Higher risk or volatility propositions like ours perform worse when markets fall, but perform better when markets rise. We know we are investing in great funds and great companies. However, in the short term, markets can and do act irrationally. Currently, we are finding a lot of irrationality in the market. For example, the CCM Intelligent Wealth Fund has invested in many fantastic companies with a consistent trend of increasing profits year after year, yet their share prices have fallen in recent months. 
This makes little sense because the main driver of share price increases is increasing profits. We know such irrationality will not last. Eventually, quality shines through and such companies experience very strong share price growth. So we remain undeterred. We look to the future with confidence and so should you. You know it makes sense. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to share it with your friends and family. For more information, head to www.wealthandtax.co.uk.